Oh, uh, hello there. Today, we're going to be continuing a previous video on renting. So this is part two of a three-part series uh, where I talk about how to get a lease, how to hold a lease, and how to end a lease. So this is the hold a lease part. This is what you're going to be spending 95% of your time on, so I'll probably spend a little bit more time on this video as a result. I'd say of the three parts, this is actually the hard part of Montreal. Because of rent control and the way that things work with landlords, you end up spending a lot of time managing the relationship with your landlord. Now, as a renter myself, I currently have a few issues with my landlord. And if you listen during this video, you might be able to hear them. sounds of renovation and at the end what I'm planning on doing is taking all of the advice that I give in this video and then applying it and seeing if I can reach a solution. So enjoy that awkward moment. Anyway, let's get into it. Payment is pretty easy, you'd think, but in Canada, because of the banking system here, it can be a little bit difficult. I have Interact auto payments. You can contact your bank and get that enabled if it's not already enabled on your account. You always need to pay your rent, obviously, but always pay it on time and never skip. The reason that you need to do this is because the Régie de Logement has two tracks for complaints. There is the standard track for things like, ah, oh, the window is drafty, or a tenant is making noise from both sides. And then there is the fast track. And that is basically for landlords to get tenants out if they have stopped paying their rent. Standard repairs or noisy disruptive tenant, that's a two year long waiting list. The waiting list for a tenant who is not paying rent is only a couple of months. So you need to pay your rent because if you stop paying your rent, even as a protest about something that is definitely wrong with the property, the landlord will get a hearing to get you kicked out for not paying your rent before you will get a hearing to complain about the landlord not fixing a drafty window. Always pay your rent. It's a common way for people to get screwed over through ignorance. If you're living in a rent controlled apartment and you're paying substantially below market rent, a certain sort of landlord will jump on the opportunity of you not paying your rent or paying late because it is the best way to get you out of the apartment quickly. Generally, when it comes to repairs, there is an understanding that things must remain in the same condition as they were when you moved in. For example, if when you rented the house, there was a basin and the bathroom with a tap that had hot and cold water, you can expect that if the hot water pipe coming into that tap were to stop working, it must be brought back to the standard and repaired. If the apartment came with an oven or a washing machine or anything else, these things must remain consistent. However, there are two categories of issue, serious issues and minor issues. Serious issues are defined as things like big leaks, uh, floored like wiring, uh, blocked sewerage, uh, access and entry problems, uh, issues with heating. However, it's a limited list of things. It's not everything. Anything that's not on the list, which is strictly defined, is not categorized as an urgent major repair. It is something the landlord will be expected to fix, but it's not something that they need to take action on within a 24 hour period. With these items, from what I can tell, the landlord needs to get back to you and at least let you know when help is on the way. With these major items, you have permission to seek an independent contractor to do the work. However, you need to basically have given your landlord a chance for them to work it out themselves. And if you do get a contractor to do the work after, say, you contact the landlord and they don't get back to you, then you need to be able to argue that you got the best price you possibly could for the work done. So you couldn't abuse the system and get urgent plumber to come out and unclog your toilet if you hadn't at least attempted to contact the landlord beforehand. And the landlord would be able to effectively argue against you if you'd gone and hired some, you know, $500 an hour plumber to come in and unclog your toilet when it could have easily been done by anyone who's got a plunger. When it comes to minor repairs, you gotta remember that landlords have a to-do list that's as long as yours. The landlord is also sorting their to-do list with the things that they have to take care of immediately at the top and then everything else down below. So what you can do if something really bothers you but it's not a part of a major repair is do it yourself. 
And the way to do this is contact the landlord and say, the tap's dripping, I could replace the tap, even though you're technically not supposed to. Here's the cost for a new tap, and I'll do it myself for this price. Is that okay? And once they agree, and you get it in writing, then you could remove it from the rent. Again, if you shortchange them when you go to pay your rent, you can be taken to the Reggie and you'll be in the fast track and they can get you kicked out of the house. You could also do this with a contractor. If you had a friend who was a plumber and you contact the landlord and said, you know, I can get my friend to do this for $120. The landlord a lot of the time, unless they live right next door and have those particular skills, is probably gonna be more than happy for you to do the work, as long as they know what the cost is. So when it comes to who can do the work, the landlord can do what's called class three work, which is kind of like a handy dad work. So that's like earthworks for water features or doors and windows, cabinets and countertops, you know, finishing drywall, that sort of thing. But they can't do what I'm gonna call like advanced dad. Advanced dad is like the dad who has the tool belt, you know, they can't do like furnaces and heating and plumbing and sewage and electrical at all. Pragmatically speaking, People do this stuff themselves all the time. A lot of things like changing a light fixture or you know, a, a broken uh, protected switch in a bathroom, they're not super hard. I mean, it's not like an electrical panel. So a lot of the time people will do them themselves and landlords will do them as well. Especially if they own a few properties and minor repairs is something that they're used to. But what is valuable is documenting that that work's been done. Again, if you think that you could have an adversarial relationship with your landlord, as in you have complained several times about an issue with this tap in the bathroom, they keep coming in and fixing it themselves and it continues to leak, it could be helpful for your case. Noise and annoyance. Weirdly enough, the noise has stopped. So noise and annoyance is the sort of thing which takes years to get a hearing at the Reggie for. Certain sorts of noise will actually be something that your landlord would be happy to get rid of too. For example, if there was a really noisy tenant in the building, it's probably frustrating for your landlord to have complaints coming from other people living in the building as well. So it generally kind of works like this. If the landlord and you are on the same side, you have a really good chance of dealing with the noise. It's kind of two on one. Reggie has all these cases that I've gone through over the years where there's just these nightmare tenants and you see a recurring theme. If one tenant is pissing off the landlord and another tenant by doing something like smoking inside or making noise, they're gonna get kicked out. Now, if it's the landlord's fault that noise is being generated, that's quite difficult to deal with. And selfishly, I have to say that calling the cops and noise control is a pretty good idea to deal with uh, noise generated by a landlord that they won't respect things. In any case of noise, so it, I've gone through quite a few cases that have gone to the Régie de Logement over the years, and in almost every case they've ruled in favour of the tenant, because landlords are pretty terrible for making noise and breaking the law. First of all, there's a 7 to 7 rule, and you actually can't do uh, any work in Montreal on a Sunday, I assume thanks to Jesus. The tenancy for these cases when they finally do get heard is a ruling in favour of a tenant, and the tenant being awarded you know, like 50% off their rent for the time that they were affected by noise. The issue, of course, is a renovation might last for a year and it's going to take you two years to get your case heard by the Reggie. So a lot of the time, by the point that they actually can go, the renovation has finished or they don't even live there anymore. I would say generally the thing to do is start off with letting the landlord know that you know what the law is and then move from there to calling the cops for noise complaints so that the landlord's like, uh, yeah, the guy's gonna call the cop anytime I'm breaking this law. They're gonna show up and uh, ticket me maybe or tell me off, that's awkward. And then if that doesn't work, file the case with the Régie de Logement as early as you can. Because of course you can always cancel if it ends up being a non-issue at some point, but at least it gets your name in the queue. Montreal has a very large number of renters living in apartment style condos or multi-unit buildings. If there's a change with the condo bylaw, it needs to actually be signed off by you. So for example, if a building decides to ban smoking or sublets, or working from home or any of the other sorts of things you might see in a condo bylaw, you actually are gonna to need to agree to it as a tenant. So it's important to note that any change as far as rules and restrictions is something that is down to you to agree to. I haven't experienced this personally, but I can see how someone who started leasing 30 years ago and likes smoking inside may come up against this issue. 
if one of these things is actually an inconvenience for you, it's possible that you could reach some arrangement with the landlord if they care that much about this stuff. Honestly though, it's not something that seems to come up that much. Most of the time when there's a change to condo bylaws, it's something that you actually would find reasonable yourself. I don't particularly want to live in an apartment building with a lot of people smoking indoors. Bastard. So there is a formula that is put out each year which dictates what the rent increase can be for a landlord. And because of the variables in the formula, it is effectively a inflation only increase. The formula never really changes and it disincentivizes the landlord to invest a lot of money in the property. Effectively, if they were to gift you a brand new um, garden shed, it would not really pay off for them. So generally the landlord's going to send out a letter um, a few months before your rent is due for a renewal each year and they will add um, one or two percentage points to that. You can pretty easily argue that you're not going to pay the additional amount if they've done no work or there's some sort of deterioration. A lot of the time if the landlord hasn't done anything on the property at all that year, they will leave it well alone. You should pretty much be seeing, if nothing's been done on the property, an inflation increase only. Generally, when the renewal period comes up, you have a month to contest the increase. If the increase is at inflation or below, nothing has changed for you. So I have a few issues with my current rental. I really like my landlord on a personal level, and I'd say he's part of this new generation of landlords uh, that are trying to maintain a good relationship with their tenants and not just be about the money. But having said that, he's still good at being a landlord in Montreal, which means he's keeping his costs down and he's getting his return on investments. So I have a few issues. The unit below me has been completely gutted from July 1st through to November the 1st or so. There are renovations going on now, but they're more modest. But there was a period there where all the soundproofing had been removed and you could hear every single thing going on down there. So remember when we talked about changing condition, when I rented the apartment, it had a certain level of soundproofing and then afterwards it uh, was totally different. In addition to that, a lot of work was being done well after 7 p.m. We had a few times where it was going on at like one in the morning and the guy who was doing the renos was living downstairs. One night he had a fucking like... <laughs> I don't want one position, I want all positions. <laughs> Instead of experiencing any sort of arousal, actually it made me fearful. <laughs> You would be falling asleep at like 3 a.m. and you would hear this laugh. You would suddenly think, holy shit, someone's in my room, you know, it was, uh, it was crazy. So the downstairs unit on the grounds of a changing condition and breaching of noise bylaws in Montreal uh, is uh, why I could probably seek a reduction in rent or a compensation. And additionally, the work wasn't being done by a certified professional, so there's plenty of stuff going on there. A second issue is there's a door in my house that won't close and I've notified the landlord about it a few times but it's suffering from being further down the to-do list. It's an exterior door but there's a second door so it's not too bad but it's annoying for me now that winter's hitting. So what I'm going to do is um, start off by talking about the issue and seeing if I can get a rent reduction without having to go through the Reggie de Logement. And then with the external door, I happen to have tools myself, so I was thinking I would pitch that I can just do it for him and uh, bill my time at some reasonable amount per hour just to get it done before the winter sets in too hard. Thanks for watching. So the final video on ending your lease um, is next. And uh, yeah, please subscribe. Uh, I keep forgetting to say that. Yeah, she's my sweet, my sweet and sour, my lemon honey.